Hello and welcome to Philbert Flies. My name's Philbert and today I'm going to be showing you how to plan a realistic IFR flight in SimBrief. We'll then import this plan into Microsoft Flight Simulator and also into Navigraph. For those of you who haven't come across it before, SimBrief is a free to use online flight planning platform. It gives you realistic routes based on real world flight plans, along with the amount of fuel required, randomized weights, accurate cruising altitudes and various other things. It's a very useful tool. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. So this is the SimBrief homepage. You'll need to register, create an account. As I say, it's totally free to do so. But SimBrief is supported by donations. So if you find yourself using it a lot and enjoying it, then please do chip in what you can afford. So we'll click on Dispatch and then Create New Flight. The first bit of information we need is the flight info, the airline code and the flight number. So for this example, I'm going to plan a flight from Frankfurt to Kos. And this is something that I'm going to be streaming later on today, both here on YouTube and also on twitch.com forward slash Flies if you'd like to pop along. So the airline is DE, that's Condor. The flight number is 1590. And we're going to be departing from EDDF, Frankfurt, and we're going to be arriving in COS. Now you can use either IATA or ICAO codes here, and the software will automatically convert any IATA codes into ICAO. I'll show you. So the IATA code for COS is KGS, and the ICAO code is LGKO, so it's populated it for you. If you don't know what the codes are for your airport, you can Google these quite easily. Most Wikipedia pages will tell you both the ICAO and the IATA codes. An alternate has automatically been selected for us. You can put your own alternative in there if you would like to. The departure time for this flight is 6.25 local or 4.25 Zulu. So we'll put in 4.25 and we'll select our aircraft type. We're going to be flying an A320. It doesn't have the A320neo in here, but I found that selecting A320 provides perfectly believable flight plans for the neo as well. The advanced aircraft options are filled out for you. Um, I tend to leave them as they are. I will, however, put in the registration of the aircraft we're going to be flying, which today is Delta Alpha India Charlie Echo. Over here, we can change the operational flight plan layout. I normally leave mine set to Lido, which is sort of a generic format, um, but you can also select various airline specific formats from this menu. Here you can choose between kilograms and pounds. For a European flight in an Airbus, I'm going to leave it set to kilograms. Here you can choose your contingency fuel and reserve fuel. I leave them at auto. And all of these options you can choose or not as you see fit. Down here, you can see that it has automatically calculated a scheduled time en route, as well as departure and arrival runways, and it's set default times for taxi out and taxi in. So for this flight, our taxi out probably will be about 20 minutes, and our taxi in time probably will be about five minutes. But you can change these as, as well as the runways if you see fit. We don't need any extra fuel. We'll let it automatically calculate the altitude, although if you wanted to, you could type your own value in here. An automatic number of passengers gives a bit of variety to the weight and the feel of the aircraft later on. Uh, zero cargo, and we'll let it automatically calculate the zero fuel weight as well. You can type whatever you like in the dispatch remarks. I don't normally bother. Moving on, the route is automatically calculated down here along with the Cindy 1 Foxtrot departure route and the Copac 2K Star. You'll see a variety of suggested routes on the right here, and you can choose whichever one you like. These are all fairly similar, to be honest, um, slightly different waypoints towards the end. But if you look down here at the map, you can see that the general shape is roughly the same. If you're calculating longer routes, you'll probably find more variation between the uh, fl flight plan options it gives you. And really, that's all we need to do. If you wanted to, you could fine tune your adjustments up here. You could select a different alternative to the one it's selected all automatically. Uh, but by and large, this is all I do. So we have our flight plan on this web page. Now we need to turn it into an exportable format. 
and we do that by clicking Generate OFP, Generate Operational Flight Plan. Click Yes to confirm and it takes a couple of seconds and here we have the output page. So you can see all of our details in here, the ones we set, the ones that were automatically calculated. So it's decided that flight level 270 is optimal for us today. Um, it's calculated the time in the air, the block time, that's the time from when you leave one gate to arrive at the next gate. Um, and there you have it. Now down here you have a preview of the paperwork. This is something that you will be able to export as a PDF. You can print it out, you can look at it on your iPad. I normally look at it on my iPad. And there's a lot of useful information here. Estimated times, um, number of passengers, payload, zero fuel weight, and the takeoff weight, and the amount of fuel you'll need. If we scroll further down, you can see um, a flight log waypoint by waypoint, um, including the altitude you'll be expected to be at and various other information. So we'll be reaching our cruising altitude of 270 uh, around, about, around about here, between Nombo and Elvag. And uh, well, I'll let you explore your own flight plans at your leisure. It's not much fun watching me scroll through this. Uh, you get a lot of NOTAMs down here as well. So we've got our output. Now we need to download it. There are two ways of doing it. You can either use the SimBrief downloader, which is what I normally do. And what that'll do is it uh, installs a very small application that automatically detects when you have a new flight plan and gives you the option to export it into whatever, ver whatever formats you want and put them in the folders you choose. So for the FS2020 format, you might choose to put it in your Microsoft Flight Simulator folder. But for now, all we're going to do is download this one FS2020 format. The others relate to various add-ons that exist for other sims at the moment. Um, but hopefully when we get more advanced airliner simulations, we'll be able to use these uh, similar formats to import our flight plan directly into the relevant aircraft's FMC. Right, download. And it's a very small file that you're downloading there, and that's going to be saved in, in your default downloads folder. Other useful options besides the various add-ons are Google Earth KML. You can download this and uh, import it into either Google Earth or Google My Maps, and then you'll be able to see your routing over the, uh, the real world map. And also PDF, which I can't find at the moment. But it's on here, trust me. Um, yeah, so if you, if you can output it as a PDF and, uh, as I said earlier, look at that on your iPad or your, another window or print it out as you see fit. So that's the planning stage done. Now what we'll do is move over into Microsoft Flight Simulator and have a look at importing it. So from the Microsoft Flight Simulator main menu, you need to go to World Map and then let's load slash save. This opens up a load di uh, dialog box and you can browse to wherever you saved your flight plan. I put mine in the default folder to make things quicker. Click on open. And here you have the route that you just planned drawn on the world map. Double check that the runway departure and arrival procedure are correctly set. Uh, you can change the runway to a gate position if you would rather. Simbrief says that there is a little bit of a bug where the uh, SIDS and STARS, the uh, departures and arrivals, don't always import. But in my experience so far, they always have. If they don't, just reselect them from the drop down menu. The next thing we need to do is go to our aircraft and make sure that our weight and balance matches the uh, Simbrief flight plan. So we did our planning in kilograms, um, but you could have done it in pounds, which would make this step easier. Um, to convert kilograms to pounds, just use Google or whatever. So our fuel required is 11,390 kilograms, which is 25,110 pounds. And you can use this fuel slider to match the fuel down here with what you've got in your flight plan. It's not an exact science. Unfortunately, you can't just type in a value. Um, 
err on the side of caution and go over rather than under, but 54% is about right. Moving on to weight, those of you who have used other simulators will be used to being able to input the zero fuel weight. Um, that isn't possible here, uh, but what we can do is match our total takeoff weight here with the estimated takeoff weight from our flight plan. So in the example I just gave, the uh, estimated takeoff weight is 70.1 metric tons, which is 158,953 pounds. Now, if you use this slider here to adjust the payload, which will adjust our takeoff weight, you will notice that the center of gravity goes outside of the limits, which is a shame. I would prefer it if they, if they uh, automatically sorted that out as you drag the slider. But all is not lost because we can adjust the figures here. And you can do this very carefully if you want to, um, calculating exact passenger weights based on the number of passengers you're expecting. Um, or you can do it the rough and ready way and just move some of the weight from the front to the back. So I'm just gonna take off 10,000 pounds from the business class cabin and add 10,000 pounds onto the economy class cabin. Our weight is 158. 1,386 pounds, which is pretty close to our flight plan weight. Center of gravity is within limits and we're good to go. Now you've already selected your aircraft, you've chosen a livery, and now we've done the weight and balance. You will need to set up your ATC options, tail number, etc. Um, and then we'll close this and click to fly. And that's it. Now, the final thing I want to talk very briefly about is importing a flight plan to Navigraph. Navigraph is a subscription service which gives you access to real world charts for arrivals, departures, um, ILS procedures, and so on and so forth. It also allows you to import up to date AIRAC navigation data into your various add ons. Um, it doesn't allow you to import that data into Microsoft Flight Simulator yet but according to a video they released that is coming for now though all we're going to do is use it to import our flight plan route so that we can look at it visually either on windows or using one of their mobile apps which is quite a useful thing to be able to do while you're flying So here's the Navigraph main screen. And because we've used Simbrief, it really couldn't be easier to import a flight plan. We're just going to go to Flights, New Flight, from Simbrief. And it'll automatically find your latest Simbrief flight plan. Click on it, and there you have it, all drawn out. We zoom in we can we can very clearly see the uh, selected departure which as you may remember was the sind 1f um, the entire route down to cos and the arrival procedure including the runway you can change all these things on the fly if ATC for example give you a different star or a different runway to land on you can tweak these both on the Windows uh, program and also on your mobile device so it's a useful tool I won't go into it in too much detail there are plenty of uh, tutorials out there already on how to use Navigraph uh, but suffice to say I find it very useful um, if a little expensive right well thank you very much for watching i hope you found this useful if you did please do like and subscribe to my channel follow me on twitch as well if you'd like to um, and i'll see you very very soon take care bye bye